Solving the heat or diffusion equation, u sub t equal duxx. This video is part three, solving the equation in the case of non-homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay, so for non-homogeneous boundary conditions, we're going to now include the steady state. Recall that we had three different cases. There was beta positive, beta negative, and beta zero. And we said the exponentials that came out of the beta positive case were not going to be that interesting. But now for the non-homogeneous boundary conditions, we use the cosine and or sine functions, depending on whether it's a Neumann or Dirichlet case. And we add in the steady state ax plus b to take into account the boundary conditions. So to see how this more general case of non-homogeneous boundary conditions fits in with what we've already talked about. Um, for zero Dirichlet boundary conditions, we just choose a equal b equal zero along with all of the a n's. And that's because uh, the a x plus b form, the steady state for the Dirichlet, zero Dirichlet boundary conditions is just a zero function. And we're left with the b n's are given by this formula here. And for zero Neumann boundary conditions, we choose the a to be 0, the b ends to be 0, and we have a formula for the b, the constant term, which I called c earlier, and for a n, which is the coefficients on the cosine terms. So the, what I'm saying here applies equally well to the zero cases, but it's, those are a little bit simpler and we've already discussed them. Okay, so when the boundary conditions are not zero, we need to figure out values of a and b so that the steady state satisfies the boundary conditions, and then the additional pieces, either the cosine terms or the sine terms, allow us to build a Fourier series to match the initial condition without messing up those non-zero boundary conditions. So, and that's because if the boundary conditions are Neumann, the cosine functions have zero slope and don't modify the required slope from the steady state. And if the problem is Dirichlet, then the sine functions don't modify the value of the function at the boundary from the steady state, which will correctly match those. So what that means is we just have to choose ax plus b to solve the non-homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay, so how do we find ax plus b? Well, for Dirichlet boundary conditions, we have uh, a condition at 0 and a condition at L, and that means we have two points. We just find the line that goes between those points. For Neumann boundary conditions, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, so if your boundary conditions require that the slope uh, at the origin be equal to alpha, oh, typo there, and require that the slope at L be beta, because u sub x actually gives you the flux once you've multiplied by d minus d, um, these boundary conditions actually tell us um, what the flux is at either of the endpoints. So a u of x equal to alpha at one end and a u of x equal to beta at the other end, if alpha is not equal to beta, that means the flux in through one end is going to differ from the flux out at the other end. And that means it'll be impossible to have a steady state. So we will always consider cases where alpha is equal to beta, because otherwise you have an imbalance of mass flux, and the mass will either be removed completely after a long period of time, or it'll blow up to infinity after a long period of time. Okay, so um, when alpha is equal to beta, that means the slope at one end has to be alpha, and the slope at the other end has to be alpha. Well, we can't have them out of whack like that. They have to line up to form a straight line. And so that means that the slope of the straight line, A, has to be equal to alpha. And now to find B, that's a little bit trickier. Now remember that what we were saying before about flux is that um, the flux along uh, the pipe is going to be dictated by the slope. So in the steady state, there's a let's say there's a positive slope like this. That means the mass is going to be moving down the gradient in that direction and down the gradient in that direction. Now, if the flux is exactly the same at all moments in time, here and here, that means whatever is coming in through one end has to be going out through the other. 
That means that the total mass in between can't be changing as a function of time. So if we were to calculate the total mass at t equals zero, and we would do that by integrating from zero to L of the initial concentration, that has to be equal to the total mass as t goes to infinity. In fact, the total mass for any time t, but the mass as t goes to infinity will be the steady state. And so if we replace this USS by AX plus B, we know that A has to be the given boundary condition alpha, and so we have alpha x plus b where b is unknown, but then the initial condition is known, so we can find this integral, and a parameter here b can now be solved by solving this equation for b. So let's summarize what we've got so far. So uh, the general solution to a non-homogeneous Dirichlet problem, the diffusion equation with the value of u at zero specified as p and the value of u at l specified as q. The solution to this, the general solution, will be the steady state which satisfies the zero x condition. So if I plug in zero here, I get p back and zero here gives me sine of zero. So all of these disappear and I'm just left with p. And if I plug in l, I would get the l's here canceling and then the p's canceling being left with q. And when I plug in L here, I get sine of n pi for all of these, that's zero. So all I'm left with then is Q. So I satisfy the boundary conditions, and here I have a whole bunch of arbitrary constants that will help me solve the initial value problem. Similarly, for the Neumann case, when we have the slope at zero and L being given by A, we have the steady state being AX plus B, and this time we add to that a cosine series, uh, and that gives us the arbitrary constants for satisfying an initial condition. The A value is just read directly off from the boundary condition, and the B value we get by equating the total mass initially and as t goes to infinity, as described just earlier. So how do we satisfy the initial condition? Suppose we have an initial condition like u at uh, t equals 0 is given by some function f of x on 0 to l. So for the Dirichlet case, we need to pick the bn values here so that when we plug in ux0, we get rid of the exponential term that becomes 1, and I now have this full expression here that has to be satisfied. Well, I'm going to be picking a whole bunch of bn's to make this equation true. It's a little bit more convenient to rewrite that equation as the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of bn sine n pi x over l is equal to this function, where this function is the initial condition minus the steady state. And when written like this, it's clear that we can use the same odd extension trick and calculate the bn's using this difference of initial condition and steady state as the function whose Fourier sine series we're trying to calculate. And so that is how we get a particular solution to an initial condition. The Neumann case is very similar, except we would have signs with an an in front here, but the principle is exactly the same, and the formula would just be the an formula with this function as the function whose Fourier cosine series we're trying to calculate.